Okay guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to change the front shock shocks and shock oil. So, I'll be switching out the shock springs with these red springs, which are more stiffer. I'm going to be replacing the oil with some Fly 50 weight shock oil. The first thing you want to do is get a Phillips head screwdriver. Next, you want to unscrew the two, the, the two top bolts on the, right here and right here. Okay, if you unscrew them and a washer flies out, it's perfectly normal. The washer is very small. Just put the washer on top of the bolt, just for now. Next, you, what you want to do is unscrew the bottom bolt right here and the bottom bolt right here. If the bolt doesn't go, use some pliers and try pulling it out. Like I use pliers and I pull it out this bolt. And put both of the bolts near each other so you won't lose them. Next, what you want to do is take off your shock. You will have this. What you want to do is get this, hold it, hold it by the top, and pull this down. Next, you should have this that holds the spring on. And then I put a spacer; it is not needed. I put this on so the spring, so the shock could be stiffer. I just noticed that my shock is bent, so I, I will need to replace the shock. Okay, since you have this right now, what you want to do is get the pliers that you ha get the pliers and get the Phillips screwdriver. So this is how I do it. I put the Phillips screwdriver through here, and get your hand or get the pliers. There should be a, a hex thread on the bottom. And I just unscrew like that. Okay. Once you unscrewed it, you should see a little cap. And that's the shock cap. Don't do not lose it. Okay. Next, what you want to do is find a little container. Okay, so you take the shock cap off, and you can tell that the oil is bad in here. It's been used a lot. I'm going to pour it in here to show you the quality of the oil. If that's black and gray oil, it means it's been used a long time. It hasn't been replaced. So you want to go back and forth with it until, I get, until you get as much oil as you can out. Hold it there for a couple minutes. Okay, now what you want to do, I unscrew the top piece so you can push it. Push on it and try putting as much oil as you can out. It's okay if you get oil on your hand. Okay, next you want to do is push as much oil as you can out. You don't want old oil in there.
get as, try getting as much as you want. If you want, you could get a towel, like so, and try, and try sh squeezing it in there, and just go like that. As you can see, like the inside of my shock, it, it, there's nothing in there anymore, and it's kind of clean. So now I'll get the towel when I clean out the outside of the shock. Okay, I cleaned out the shock now. Looks much cleaner. Next, get your shock oil that you have right here. And get your shock. Make sure your shock is all the way down. The, 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 this next step is very important. Never like once you have shock oil in here, never like push it up, because you will have air, in which air is bad. So next, what you want to do is get the shock oil and pour it until you see the very top. So mine's almost to the top. I'll add a little bit more. It's better to overfill it than to underfill. Okay, now this step. You get the bottom piece and you push up. Push slowly and slowly because you don't want to spill the oil. Okay, then pull down. Now you can tell that it's not leaking. Now what you want to do is put the shock put the shock cap back on. Don't forget about the rubber gasket. As you can see, it's starting to leak a little bit, but that should be good. It should, as long as it's not underfilled. Okay, I screwed it back on, and then get the same towel that you had, and just rub the excess off. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing how the same thing that I did, like how I took off the shock cap. I'm gonna tighten it this time. Instead of loosening it, I'm gonna go I'm gonna tighten it. You don't wanna over tighten it because you can strip it, which is bad. Okay, since you have that done you can always check. My shock doesn't make any noises now. That's very good. I took the back, the this piece off, which you don't need to take it off, but I took it off. It's more comfortable for me. So now I'm gonna screw it back on. If you took it off too, you could get some pliers and do it like that. Okay, so now I'm putting the spring back on. So it goes like this. If you have a spacer, the spacer goes on first. If you do not have a spacer, then you put then you put this piece on. So again, if you don't if you have a spacer, it goes on first. If you don't, it goes on like this without a spacer. But since I have a spacer, I put it on like this. Then they get whatever the heck is this called. <clears throat> then I'm putting on my new spring. And then the last part is this, putting that back on. As you can see, my shock is totally refilled with the new spring. This is way stronger than the stock spring. So now I, now I have to put the shock back on. This bowl is kind of dirty. I'm going to clean it off with the towel. So next what you want to do is get the top bolt. It goes through the shock, shock like this. 
then get the washer and put the washer on next. The washer allows the shock to move from side to side because as you can see the shock isn't staying still. Once it goes down it moves that way but once it goes up it goes that way. Next what you want to do is get it and screw it in. You want to tighten it, but never over tighten it. The thread they strip, and that's very bad. Seems tight enough. Then you want to get your bottom bolt that you have and put it through here. You align it, you see the hole through here, and you see the hole through back here. You want to align it. I aligned mine on the first try. Then next, you just screw it in. And that's it guys, thanks for watching my video, here's a comparison from my old shock to my new shock. This doesn't make any noise, and it's stiff. You can hear that noise and it's also soft, it's too soft. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.